Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back in to bring you my thoughts on Season 4's Healer Balance for the incoming Mythic Plus season. This season is also going to be featuring all eight regular Dragonflight dungeons. Dawn of the Infinite is going to be a Mythic Zero dungeon, but it's not going to have M+. So there's probably going to be some decent items to farm from there, but it's not going to be going for that juicy, juicy IO score. It's important to note that the tier sets that everybody's using depends on what they voted for like three months ago. And so some healers are going in with minimal changes. They grab the Season 3 tier set and bring it on into Season 4. And a few of them have voted for earlier tier set iterations. So there's a bit of gameplay change that they're going to have alongside that. And you're also going to have a wealth of trinkets at your disposal from the Booleans, the new Dinar system that's going to be available going into this. This video, we're going to talk about what healers I think are going to be looking like for next season for keys what sort of factors are really going to be determining, what is going to be meta, what could be meta, what could be kind of in the middle, and which healers, I think, just kind of need some extra loving. Uh, at the time of this recording, we haven't had any healer changes just yet for, like, tuning, but unless something else changes, here's my thoughts on where the healers stand at the moment. Starting it off, let's talk about Resto Druid. I think Resto Druid is really well positioned going into Season 4. Some of the big reasons for it but not the only ones, are because of how it fits with a, an Ixodia or a more meta-focused group. Throughout Dragonflight, the best spec of each class usually starts seeing like really, really high representation. You've seen it with priests, you've seen it with druids, you also have seen it in the past with paladins, and I think this trend is going to continue where druid bringing the Mark of the Wild buff for versatility is going to be insanely beneficial for all those high-key pushing groups. People are going to naturally bring the best spec of Druid alongside of it, and then that's going to push up representation numbers as a result. So going into this coming season for Season 4, I think Druid's probably going to be in the best position because of how it can fit with an ideal composition. Vengeance Demon Hunter still has an insane amount of shutdowns, which I think has really propelled it up to the top. All the tanks that I've played with thus far have been like stout or they've done good damage or whatever, but nobody but Vengeance Demon Hunter is able to be bringing the amount of crowd control that they do. And as a result, they start forming the group around what else is going to be good. Druid bring the Mark of the Wild is insanely valuable. Their damage on their own is insanely high, as we've seen from the recent MDI tournaments. It seems like they're able to handle really high output situations, whether it's going to be heavy in, in burst for some of the dungeons that we're going to be expecting in season four like ruby life pools that can have some really bursty encounters and i think even when you bring it into something like the ticking damage out of halls of infusion on the third boss there our druid will still be able to be highly successful as a result it also does a really good job of putting out a great amount of damage onto like totems so something like the last boss of brackenhide hollow Druid's going to do a very significant amount of damage there, helping push high keys, pushing up representation, and of course, shaping the meta alongside it. So I think our Druid is probably going to be one of the specs that has the easiest time getting into high key groups going into next season. You know, it's also easy learning backend web development from start to finish in both Python and Go programming languages with our sponsor, Boot.dev. They believe that the best way to get you to actually learn is by doing, and they've built an amazing site with their own self-paced RPG game to teach you everything you need to know about back-end web development. There is some amazing earning potential, of course, by being a back-end developer. The median salary for them in 2023 was over $100,000, and many of them, of course, have that flexibility to be able to work from home. If you're very competitively minded, their site does an excellent job to be able to continue to keep you engaged with XP, levels, achievements, and their own leaderboard system so you can compare yourself against others. They believe in their site so much that they have a 30-day, no questions asked, refund policy, as well as free demos of every course and as interactive feature to get you coding, to understand what you're buying, and to make sure that you're getting the most value. If you'd like to check out boot.dev, make sure you click the link in the description box and use my code AUTOMATICJACK to get 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. Thanks so much to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Another healer I think is going to have an easy time getting invited into Mythic Plus for next season is going to be Mistweaver. They, continuing on with their Season 3 tier set, the ridiculous number of amazing talent improvements that they've received throughout this expansion, their output is 
is phenomenal. Their wealth of burst cooldowns and things like Shaylun's, the additional defensive value that they have over a variety of other healers, and really just the easy way with which they're able to put up huge amounts of healing to overwhelm any sort of mechanics that might be bringing your allies down. Mistweaver just does a fantastic job in the season four dungeons of being able to just crank extremely high output. They also have the perfect dispel profile, where as Druid can only get some poisons, which are still prominent in a number of the dungeons for season four, things like Algathar poisons are absolutely mandatory. There are still some diseases that you're going to have to deal with, and Mistweaver does an excellent job of dealing with those as well. Whether it is the slows that you're going to experience on your tank in areas like Uldaman in the very tight corridors, or some of the diseases you're going to have in Brackenhide Hollow, it's going to be nice to have those disease dispels on hand. Mistweaver bringing those is utterly fantastic. They don't have Mark of the Wild, and unfortunately a physical debuff is not as valuable if the meta is going the way we think it will, which is leaning towards more caster heavy compositions, but it's still gonna be some useful extra damage and Mistweaver does have great CC along the way. I think Mistweaver is going to be in a very, very strong position for season four. Our next setup, and again, this isn't some like tried and true tier list. This is just more of how I think healers are going to be represented going into the next season. I think you have three healer specs which have really high strengths, but may not be as represented. The first ones I want to talk about are Disc and Holy Priest. Both of them have received a number of changes in Season 3, with Holy Priest most notably getting a slight revamp. Be sure to check out our Holy Rework video if you're interested in seeing what that's all about. But suffice it to say, Holy Priest does a lot of damage in dungeons now. It, it just does lots of damage. It also has really good flexibility with Divine Word getting back into the pool where you can empower a Holy Word and then it gives you 15 seconds of either damage or healing, variety of buffs on hand depending on the situation that you're faced with. As a result, Holy Priest is in a better position to deal with a variety of damage patterns. Disc, of course, with a big revamp leading into Season 3 is doing great work and continues to be able to do so. The opportunities for Mind Soothe and Mass Dispel are back and better than ever, with lots of Dragonkin, lots of Humanoids in the dungeon pool, lots of opportunities there. So I would say, by and large, both Disc and Holy have really good strengths that they have on hand. Holy's a lot better at like blasting single target and kind of prio targeting one or two people at a time, whereas Disc is trying to push up health pools kind of all the time, all at once by naturally doing damage. And so, the strength of disc would definitely be on players being more spread out and needing to burst AoE heal all the time, whereas Holy would have a better advantage of just kind of prio healing and mashing huge healing into an individual or two here and there, and a weakness with players who are spread out. That being said, I think both specs are going to be in very good position to the point that if you just prefer one or the other, you should just play that because you're probably going to get better results that way. The threat for both pre-specs, however, and the reason that I don't have them in some easy invite tier, the way Druid and Mistweaver are, is that Shadow Priest is on the rise. And no hate to our Shadow Sisters over there, but when Shadow gets better, the representation for Healer Priest starts going down in meta comps, and that again naturally just kind of trickles over into Gen Pop. That is really the only downside I would say for Disc and Holy in this incoming season, is that when you want to have a Fortitude buff, you want to bring the best spec that has Fortitude on hand. Same thing like we talked about earlier on with Druid. That's just kind of how the game is going. Otherwise, I think both Disc and Holy are in a fantastic position for the incoming season. Keeping their Season 3 tier set bonuses, who to thunk, feels pretty dang good. To round out our strong, but maybe having a slight downside, I think Evoker actually fits right next to it. Evoker is getting the old Season 1 tier set, but they've added a couple adjustments to it. The 2 set is... After Empower spells are cast, you have a few seconds of additional Reversion healing. And then the fourth set is the big one with the instant cast Living Flames, which are giving damage or healing depending on how you want to use it and two stacks. So with that, you do a lot of damage. I haven't played my Evoker. The footage you're seeing here from PTR was my first time playing Prez since like season three PTR, you know, almost like six months ago or five months ago or whatever it was. And even then I hadn't played it all that much at that point either. And the way that I'm able to deal just ridiculous amounts of damage near instantly, I'm sure more experienced preservation evokers are going to have a heck of a fun time. 
by bringing this set back and being able to have the flexibility for damage or for healing. You're basically using, or at least how I was playing, was using temporal anomalies to spread around reversions and then also empowering my dream breath and then using temporal anomaly again to be able to have high powered two stacks of the dream breath hot onto my allies to deal with a lot of the heavy ticking damage that might exist and of course the flexibility and power that temporal anomaly gives you now that it's back to hitting five targets is insanely satisfying i will say it does a pretty darn good job with prio healing but you kind of just have to make sure that you're mindful of not just burning through all your living flame cast on damage and ook ooking it like the, i was in a number of our dungeon runs and once you kind of pool it and know when you need to start pooling some of those living flame charges you're going to be able to deal with some of the burst damage or kind of surprise damage even from other players with quite a bit of ease yeah there's some frustration of course with positioning and range that evoker has but the biggest threat i would see for them in season four is more so if aug gets back into the mix and gets any level of popularity that is more likely to affect preservation's position rather than some of the range issues that all evokers have to deal with next up let's talk about some of the healers i think are doing okay but are lacking a little bit compared to others shaman actually was a lot of fun to be able to play with and again it had been another healer that it's been a minute since i actually had gotten some more playtime on it messing around with both chain heal and anti-chain heal builds with primal title core and obviously a chain heal build with high tide i found that i really enjoyed running the chain heal setup and if i ever got into danger i was really able to bail myself out at the expense of burning down my mana pool and I noticed that you definitely have to care about mana, but when played properly and when you're able to manage your resources effectively, no one damage is coming out, mana probably won't be as much a, of a concern, but certainly compared to the other healers that I was playing and testing, I did feel like Shaman had to really be mindful of its mana and the resources on hand. It's also still a pain maintaining Acid Rain as your just primary massive damage resource compared to some of the other specs and how they're able to more easily deal damage, especially if tanks are kiting and running around, Sanguine Week, you know, the works. Having so much of your damage kind of focused into Acid Rain felt really annoying to me and not really feeling like my other damage abilities did as much to be able to contribute. Bringing back the Season 1 tier set where you're getting a crit bonus around your Cloudburst Totem, Felt all right, not super insanely engaging the way that other healers have had with their tier sets. Didn't really feel like anything was like unlocked for me or I felt especially overly powerful along the way. I did feel like there was a lot of modifiers to track and babysit, little cooldowns that I have to make sure I'm managing to get alongside the way. But I mean, that's also just been Shaman for a while. So again, refreshing myself on playing it. I think that Shaman's in a solid position, but there's not anything overwhelming that sort of like pushes you to go bring it. Doesn't bring a disease along the way. Poison Dispelling Dotem can be pretty good, but if you need more frequent Poison Dispels, it may not be as beneficial as having a healer that actually is bringing a regular Poison Dispel on hand. And Bloodlust is usually already sort of brought by uh, Aug Evokers or Mages, which all seem to be good already. So I'd say Shaman is in like a positive position. It's in like a fine position. I almost feel like Shaman should be in a position where it can get some kind of streamlining the way that disc has gotten some streamlining in season three because i felt like there were a lot of buttons and a lot of times i was just using one stacking modifier or one buff to be able to make sure my cloudburst totem actually felt good or my chain heals actually felt good once i got procs once i got extra value on hand eh, wasn't my favorite healer to be testing i think it'll do all right in next season though now you might have noticed that there's one healer left remaining and honestly i i gotta say paladin really needs some work i'm always of course playing my priest going into every season but paladin was actually the first healer that i ever made way back in like mist of pandaria and i've always maintained it every expansion it's almost always been like my primary alt but i gotta tell you this is my least favorite version of paladin i think over about 10 years of having that spec playing it as like an alt or cutting edge level you know just whatever i just have not been enjoying how paladin feels the damage of it feels really low like near non-existent i feel like actually adding extra damage is just running my mana far down which feels terrible uh holy power spenders actually costing mana and costing a resource along the way feels 
really incredibly irritating. Even just extra sort of stacking modifiers of trying to make sure I'm in my Consecrate so I can do slightly more healing out of my Word of Glory when Word of Glory and Holy Shock are doing like 10% of somebody's health pool when <laughs> they're just getting annihilated by burst damage. So I feel like it's extremely punishing for misusing cooldowns. It's extremely punishing uh, if you're like overlapping cooldowns or using too many for a certain situation and then you have nothing later on. And the reward for using the abilities properly feels like you're kind of just keeping everybody alive. Whereas other healers like a Mistweaver is just spinning to win on a variety of targets and everybody's topped and everyone's happy. Or you hit a Shailun's Gift and everyone's topped and everyone's happy and then you have 20-30 seconds without it or something like that. The punishment doesn't feel very high when you're playing a Mistweaver, but it feels very high when you're playing a Paladin. I think that them just going after flat aura nerfs to be able to resolve Holy Paladin after Season 2 has just left all of its abilities very watered down and nothing is really feeling that powerful. It feels like your abilities are segmented into 5 million pieces where you're just kind of hitting buttons and then eventually the power of all these passive modifiers are just stacking up to push somebody's health pool to full. Not really you landing a powerful Holy Shock and then pushing up a health pool as a result. I really, really hope that Holy Pally gets some buffs going into Season 4, if not an outright rework by trimming down certain abilities or something. Doesn't seem like we're heading in that direction with where the hero talents are currently taking us for The War Within, but we'll see. I definitely say that Paladin deals like a struggle bus. I'm sure it's going to be able to do really high keys. I'm sure it will. It has good utility. It has all the things in the base kit that are excellent in a dungeon environment. Bop, Devo Aura, Bubble for itself, Sack, it's all fantastic. But how it plays and how forgiving it can be when you're trying to push up health pools quickly throughout the burst damage and craziness that Dragonflight dungeons can throw at you. I think that Paladin needs the most work going into the next season, both from an enjoyment perspective and I think from a performance perspective. Because yes, when people are using their defenses properly, you can have these no healer runs and it doesn't matter for you know the absolute best elites in the world or anything. But the reality of like the regular dungeon pool, it definitely feels like Paladin is just not in great position and needs some super serious love to both be more enjoyable and I think to also perform better. We don't need to have Paladins blotting out the sun like they did in Season 2, but having a spec feel this beat down, especially for me personally, who I've played it for a number of years, it's very demoralizing and I hope that Blizzard does something about it thus far. A little early, like we mentioned, for an official tier list, but I know that we have a few weeks until Season 4 is coming around and people were thinking about what they wanted to roll to, what was looking fun. So, my plan right now Priest, as always, bringing forward, and I'm kind of debating on whether or not I want to have Preservation kind of compete for one of my alt slots, one of my two other characters that I'll be playing, versus Monk or Druid. I'm really on the fence. Maybe I'll maintain four characters in Season 4. We'll see. Well, we'll see how fun that the, the new M Plus season's going to be. Let me know what you guys think of our, you know, pseudo State of the Healer list that we have going so far big love to all our patrons all our twitch subs all our channel members here on youtube for making all of this content possible we could not do it without you if you guys are interested in joining check us out in the description down below thanks so much for watching hope you all enjoyed it and i'll catch y'all next time